Some of you ask me how to use expressions in Azure Data Factory. In today's video, I'm going to share my experiences on that topic. Hi all, if you're new to my channel, I am Riz Ang and I build Azure Data Platform. What is Azure Data Factory expressions? It is like a language that you can use, set up and maximize Azure Data Factory pipeline. You can find expressions usually with an ad symbol, like an ad in an email. And expression generally is not a static value, but it is actually a bit of like a code that Data Factory will read and evaluate and translate that into an actual value. Before I actually go with the example, I want to explain what I have here. I have a data lake. And within that data lake, I have a CSV file that contains a metadata that I'm going to use in generally in my uh, copy, whether it's full or incremental copy activity. Now, what's inside the CSV file is just a list of two rows, really. Uh, it's just uh, the source schema, the source item, which is basically a table name, the list of columns, uh, it's just R, all columns, so it's just why it's in star. And I have a layer, which is the destination uh, for this is going to raw. And the sync schema, this is basically the folder. I just call, I just call it DB. And I have another one called sync item here, which is the destination file name. And lastly, I also have this column called incremental, which I set whether true or false. Back in Data Factory, I have this blank pipeline. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look up that CSV file. So I'm going to go to channel and click look up. Go to settings here and I will pick data lake. And I'll type raw data. This is where the folder is in data lake. And I'll just type lookup.csv. And make sure I untick that one because I want to get all rows, not just the first one. Okay, if I just debug this successful, the output of this is I get these two rows, row one and these values and row two and the ingredients value, recipes and ingredients, just like the one in CSV file. Is to pick up that output from this lookup and then call another pipeline in a loop. So let me just create a loop first, which is the for each here in iteration and conditionals. I click for each, let me link the two. I want to use the output of the lookup. Now, this is probably the first example of the expression. So I just go to these items and I go to dynamic content and I can see the lookup one as the uh, from the previous step, you can click that one and make sure you add value. So what this means is this will pick up the output from the lookup activity and it will take that value as well. Another example is to use expression within if condition. Taking from what we had before, if I go into this for each statement, and let's say I create an if conditions activity, which is here. Now, what I want to do is I want to check if the value from the CSV file uh, incremental column, which is this one, if, if it's true, it will go to the true activities. If it's false, then it goes to the other one. What I can do here is I can just go to activities and I can just set the expression here to be boolean. So this is a bool function. It's, it's a check if the value is uh, true or false. Yeah, I just click that iterator uh, current item. So it will pick up the, the individual items from the lookup values before. Remember, there are two records. And I will just type in the column name incremental, which is basically the column name from the CSV file. 
Building from the previous example, my third example is to use expression in copy activity. Now, how I'm going to do that is first, I will explain to you that I have two data sets already created. One is for the data lake as a CSV file and the, the path, the file path have all been parameterized, the layer, the directory, and also the item. I name it as layer, schema, and item. And they, I also have the base, SQL database uh, data set that I have also parameterized here, okay? Now within my pipeline, I'm gonna go to the if condition and I'm just gonna click the true condition here and I'll create a copy data activity. For the source, I will pick SQL database and I will parameterize the source schema. So that will be source schema. And just, I wanna highlight here that what I'm trying to do here is I'm just gonna collect the individual item from the for each loop based on the lookup values in here. As you can see, I have a column name source schema here. I'm just gonna pick that value basically. So I wanna pick individual value here uh, every row. So that's why I put item dot source schema. And if you want to evaluate an expression, you have to have this add, fun add symbol at the start. So that's it. And I will do the same for the table. So that will be at source item. For the sink, I'll create data lake. And for the layer, again, similarly, I will take that value from the CSV file. So I'll put sink layer, which is the sink layer. For the schema, I will create something similar. So item dot sync schema, except in this one, I'm gonna make it a bit more interesting, which is I'm just gonna combine with item dot sync item. What I wanna do is basically in data lake, I wanna copy the file is as a into raw layer in in a folder called db and also within that folder db i want to create a folder recipes or ingredients and within that folder recipes and ingredients i want to paste the file but if you do it this way this will throw you an error and because i think if you have more than one uh, expressions like this as a whole you need to put a bracket into it or you have to use a concatenate function, a concat function, uh, which uh, you can do as well. So if you want this to work, you have to put a curly bracket in each of the item here. If you want to use concatenate function, you have to do it a little bit differently, which is like this. You have to put comma and you have to quote that character and now you have to put that in an end bracket. So just to explain here, you have to start with at and because without the at, uh, the data factory wouldn't evaluate this properly. And within here, if you use the concat function, uh, you have to okay, type the concat Concatenate is basically combining strings, by the way. And I have the schema and I, have, I want to concatenate that with a slash and then the actual, uh, the, the other sync item name. Yeah. I actually prefer not to use concatenate because it's easier to write it uh, directly like this. back to the earlier version. This is my preferred version because it's just easier to read. For the value, you know what, I'll use the concatenate function. So concat 
and item uh, so sorry saying item comma dot csv okay so what happened here i'm just going to basically paste this sing item as a csv file okay and if i just save that now and i want to test run this it should only pick up the first row because of the if condition if condition is just going to take the the one that is true go back up and i just debug this you see here this this will only be running once okay well i've test run this uh pipeline now what you can see here i have within my role i have this folder db within db i create a folder named recipes and within recipes i have a recipes file a csv file my next example of using expression is to expand from what we had before let's say we go back to that if statement and the copy activity let's say i want to add let's say i want to change the file name if you go to item when you click the file name or the item here let's say i want to add a date time within this file name what i can do is i can do this format date time this is a function uh, to yeah to use a date time and reformat it in this case i'm just going to use a system variable called pipeline trigger time and just so that you can see i'll fix it a little bit later uh, is that i can make this format as year month day underscore hour and minute second let's be let's let's be, let's try that one and i'm just gonna put that back up and i click finish and now i'm just gonna rerun this step now when it's successful if i go back to the data lake if i go to the same folder if i refresh voila you see these recipes and you have this file name in the year monday hour minute and second so uh, this is in uh, based on my time zone so it might be different from yours just bear that in mind and if you notice why there's a difference in the timing it's because the data factory is using the utc time zone which is uh, zero uh, gmt zero whereas this time in my windows i think is using uh, one hour after that's what, that's what the difference my fifth example on expression is to create a customized sql query let's say if i go to my copy data and if i go to my source and instead of using table as a query i want to use this query here and in here i'm gonna write a dynamic content and what i will do is I've got this one so what i'm trying to use it is yeah just write a single query select and then source columns from the source schema there's a dot in between and then the source item just a typical uh, uh, sql query here i'm not going to run this because i hope you already know what will happen it was just the same thing but uh, now instead of using table now it's using query my last and bonus example is to do with joining variables. Here I have two append activities and I happen to have a variable, two variables. One is a string, the other one is an array. Now, let's say I want to uh, create an expression where I want to join um, the values of the variable too. So in my first append variable i created this uh, or add sorry a value aaa into variable two and in the second append i do something very similar but instead of aaa i do bbb 
Another example that would be useful is when you pass the variable into, let's say here in Databricks is, let's say I want to send that variable as a long string with a comma in between. So what you can do is when you write the parameter, I'm just going to go in to here. I will add a bracket. So what happened here? Let me start from scratch. So I will add uh, join and I will add that variable. And from here, I will just add a, let's say a comma in between. That's what happened. So um, this basically will combine the values within this variable and then put comma as a separator, just like a CSV file really. Thank you for tuning in. That's all for my video today about using expressions in Azure Data Factory. If you do like this video, please smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you enjoy videos about data engineering, data factory, all, all things about Azure data engineering. Until then, see you next time.